my betrayed husband had a revenge affair. Around they met a couple of times. He ended it on his own and confessed to it, something which I never did. My affairs were both much longer and I was found out instead of confessing. And it hurt on the day I found out. And the reason why I cheated. I feel there are two components to why. First is why I cheated. Second is why I was able to cheat. Why did I cheat? Forgive me for being blunt, but the reason is because I could get away with it. I saw the opportunity to do something I saw as fun and exhilarating. And I thought as long as I keep it secret, nobody gets hurt. My betrayed husband had a revenge affair. Around the one year mark of D-Day, my betrayed husband had a revenge affair. It was physical and they met for sex a couple of times. He ended it on his own and confessed to it, something which I never did. My affairs were both much longer and I was found out instead of confessing. We are one and a half years out now and it's been a rocky road. He turned very violent on D-Day. Nothing physical has happened since then, but he used to lash out verbally on an almost daily basis until recently. I took it all. It felt deserved. We are both in IC. He joined only after he had his affair. Therapy was worked wonderfully and he hasn't verbally lashed out since the start of this year. I make the effort now of looking out for him, going out of my way to make him feel special and loved and also trying to be there for him and he's feeling low when he's feeling low because 99 percent of the time it, ha it has something to do with my betrayal i can't believe how open and vulnerable he's being and every day i see love and care for me in his eyes i marvel at how he finds the strength he also makes the effort he starts conversations on his own he checks up on me he also expresses regret and apologized about some of the things he said to me after D-Day. I appreciate his efforts so much, I cannot put it into words. Now we recently went to marriage therapy and, and there the counselor said something that didn't sit well with me. They said that we need to find a way to treat both my affair and his revenge affair on an equal footing and make sure we don't prioritize one over the other because both are betrayals of trust. That statement immediately stood out to me, and I looked at my husband to see how he reacted to it and found him enthusiastically agreeing to it. He bought it up himself later on. He started to apologize, telling me that he never gave me any space or opportunity to address his revenge affair. He said he betrayed me too, and that is why if there is anything I want to discuss, he'll be happy to do it. But I don't really understand. I never discussed it because I never thought about it this way. It's not because he didn't give me the give me the space to talk about it. I just sort of didn't feel the need to talk about it among all the other things we were talking about. I mean, logically, his affair was a betrayal, no doubt about it. But it was done with the intent of revenge and hurting me back. He also stopped it on his own. Is it unnatural for me to not be concerned about this? He was asking if I never even got mad about him having a revenge affair. I did. I was angry and it hurt on the day I found out. But I also very quickly realized that it was that it was a petty act done out of spite. He didn't actually want to have an affair. He only wanted to hurt me back any way he could and this was the best way he found. Is this rug sweeping? It's been six months and not once have I felt the need to discuss this. But nowadays I feel so ugly. Well, I don't know how this works, but it seems my infidelity and the subsequent fallout has led to me developing a negative self image of myself. I don't really know how to put this into words other than I simply don't feel nice about how I look anymore. I was never the type to be proud of my looks, 
but I was confident enough by my appearance. Now I compulsively spend literal hours applying makeup every time I need to go out because I don't feel confident in how I look anymore. Whatever I wear, whichever angle I look at myself, I feel ugly. I have changed my hair thrice since D-Day. I can't look at people in the eyes or bear being the, bear being the center of attention in meetings. I feel self-conscious all the time. I often excuse myself and go to the washroom to have a mini breakdown. When I look at myself in the mirror, I wonder how people even put up with such an unpleasant face. It's not just my face. I find my voice annoying as well. I used to send my husband tons of voice notes. Not anymore because when I play them back, I can't believe this is what I sound like. I feel conscious about how I walk how I eat, and wondering all the time if I'm doing something weird. I feel silly talking about it. I know this is such a small issue compared to the bigger problems with my marriage, my affairs, and my husband's pain and triggers. I am tackling so many things at once in therapy. I don't know if it is useful to bring it up. You know, this issue about my self-confidence at the time when fixing our marriage is more important. Did I put off this issue for later when our marriage is in a better state? And the reason why I cheated. I feel there are two components to why. First is why I cheated. Second is why I was able to cheat. Why did I cheat? Forgive me for being blunt, but the reason is because I could get away with it. I have spent months trying to understand what was going on in my head when I made that decision. I've understood now that there is no other logic there, no grand why. I don't think about why. I should have an affair the way you or anyone else would. I did not weigh any pros and cons of my husband in, in the AP. I saw the opportunity to do something I saw as fun and exhilarating, and I thought as long as I keep it secret, nobody gets hurt, and there is no harm in it. I was selfish... It was a selfish choice on all accounts, and in my mind, I was not making a choice between my husband and AP. I saw that I could get away with having both, so why not have both? But clearly, there was something wrong with me. My husband, someone I claimed to love, was not considered anywhere in that decision to have an affair. I was breaking my promise to him. I was giving away something that rightfully belonged to him by virtue of being my husband. I was betraying him, his love and his trust, and not feeling a single bit of guilt about it until the moment he found me out. Everyone who cheats is emotionally dysfunctional. Second why is about finding what exactly is wrong with you that allowed you to make such selfish choices and be so empathetic towards someone you claim to love. For me, it was a combination of childhood trauma, vulnerability issues, and toxic unrealistic expectations from my husband. For other waywards, it might be anything from bad boundaries, sexual trauma, to mental disorders. Some are simply born unable to not be selfish. People with narcissistic tendencies often end up as a wayward at some point in their lives. I think the second why is way more important than the first one. From the perspective of a person who was emotionally dysfunctional, you will likely struggle to understand it because there's nothing to understand there. This functional human does not make logical decisions. You will only drive yourself insane trying to make sense of it. It is unhelpful. The second one, on the other hand, comes from more mature and understandable viewpoints. It arises from remorse and a conscious effort at trying to understand and not repeat the same mistakes. It explains why the person reached a stage where they could make these illogical decisions in the first place. This why is helpful because it also tells you what you can do to avoid making selfish decisions in the future. This is why you should focus on if you want to be a better person. Now having shame about wanting sex with my husband. Since D-Day, I've been going through periods of intense desire from my husband. I have always been a fairly low libido person, so this is completely new for me. Don't get me wrong. I find my husband very attractive, and, and right from when we first met, we've, we've had amazing chemistry, and I've always enjoyed sex with him. 
But this is different. This is just pure lust. I can't take my eyes off of him. Even in completely innocuous non-sexual moments with him. Alone and in alone and in public. We went to a friend's marriage last week. Every time my husband put his hands around my waist, I felt flustered and lightheaded. Even sitting close to him gets me all hot and bothered. I often catch myself staring at him doing random things around the house. And now I'm starting to make up fantasies and scenarios involving him inside my head like a teenage girl. I've had my hormones checked and they're all normal. We are already pretty active sexually. We have sex almost every day and I love it. I want more. I can't get enough of him. I know I need to start initiating, but I've been holding myself back. We had a hysterical bonding phase immediately after D-Day. That, that was when I initiated it for the first time in my life, because that was the first time I felt such uninhibited desires towards somebody. It was amazing. But then he withdrew, and there was no intimacy for a long time. He also started lashing out on me verbally. He shamed, for, he shamed me for how I initiated sex only after D-Day and never before in our relationship. He said AP turned me into a slut. He said I probably missed AP so much and he felt I was just using him now like a, like a dildo now that AP is not around anymore. He told me to just go F my AP if I wanted to get it in. I understand how he arrived at those conclusions. I don't hold it against him. But God, what what he said effed me up. I tried everything to not let them affect me because I knew he just said them. I couldn't. It feels like those words got imprinted in me when he said them. It's to ring inside my head when I have sexual thoughts about my husband. And to a lesser degree, they still do. It makes me so ashamed to even think about initiating sex again. I know he doesn't feel that way anymore. He has apologized about them. Not just a shallow blanket apology, but his verbal lashings. He remembers every single thing he spoke to me. He apologized about every sentence individually. It meant so much. It shows me that it was hard for him too to say those things to me. He just didn't know what else to do with his anger and frustration. That apology helped me see that he doesn't actually feel that way and he won't judge me for my desires. This has been a long time effort in therapy, but I think I can finally say that I've let go of that crushing shame around initiating sex again. I talked to him about it last month, about how what he said in anger ended up impacting my confidence. I knew he would be understanding and, and, and empathetic, but I was so scared and I'm so glad I was able to take that leap of faith. He was wonderful. He reassured me and told me how much he loved and appreciated when I initiated and, and expressed my desires. I feel proud to say that I initiated for the first time again last night. I didn't feel shame about it. I didn't feel scared he'll turn me down. And even if he did, I think I'll be okay with it. And that is how it should be. He's my husband, for F's sake. It's okay for me to want to get it in with him. I know he desires me back, and I know that as long as I have his consent, I have all the right in the world to think about him all the time. Needless to say, I'll be looking forward to this weekend. Wow. She's talking about in the beginning, oh, he had this affair on me. And in her second pose, I feel so ugly. Yeah, because he's ba he was banging out some other woman. You didn't care at first. You really just didn't care until he started banging out some other woman. I changed him. He's a different person. He lashed out at me. Now, I don't condone putting your hands and getting physical and all that stuff. You don't do that. Here's why he. This man ha is making a huge mistake by trying to reconcile with her. He may end up cheating on her again. She's for sure might cheat on him again. Because she's going to lose respect for him because he forgave her, even though she knows now that he can get women. So she's she's weary. She's, she's definitely, she knows that now. She knows that for sure. But the trust in this relationship is gone. Neither one of them are going to trust, e trust each other. Neither one of them respect each other anymore. 
it's so stupid to stay with a cheater. The revenge cheating and all that stuff, you just leave. It's not worth it. You're just wasting your time going to counseling, wasting money on counseling and all this stupid stuff. Just separate it sober. Her reasoning for cheating. I cheated simply because, because I could. Huh? What? You guys want to know why I cheated? There's two reasons. First reason, because I could. Point blank period. I can do whatever I want. I knew I could get away with it, so I did it. So what happens when you have that opportunity again? Seriously? You think you're not going to you think you're not going to try to get away with it? Seriously? Come on, man. This is a big joke. You guys don't belong. You guys don't need to be married to each other. It's stupid. Let's check out these comments. OP, thank you for sharing something so sensitive and complex. My goodness, that sounds like a tough situation. Here's the uh, OP. You're right. I try my best to be open and converse with him instead of struggling along and withdrawing. Get professional therapy right away. Why is always the easy part? It is how it is the how could you? That is the hard part. Oh, they're talking about when she said why she cheated. Here's OP. If my husband was to ask me how could you, this is what I would tell him. Because during that time when I was giving myself to someone else, my desire for short-term validation was more important to me than your love for me and my re respect towards you. I didn't always feel that way, and I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, that's what you say now. I think something was wrong with me during that time and that I was able to be so selfish and, un and unempathetic towards you. If you give me the chance, I will show you that I can change this about myself. I will work on myself and ensure I kill the parts of me that turned me into a selfish person. But I cannot go back and change what has been done, however much I regret it. If it makes you want to leave me, that is perfectly valid and I won't stop you from going away. All I can do now is take steps to not repeat it. This woman is a piece of crap. I'm sorry, she's a piece of crap. It happened. It is what it is. I can't take it back. Stay with me. If you want to leave, then just go. Dude, you need to go. Leave this woman alone. She's ugh. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Crazy situation, and I need help badly. My wife had an affair with my best friend, which produced a child. She knew this and had me believing for the last six years the child was mine. After we split, she told me. I didn't believe it and got a paternity test. Sure enough, the child isn't mine. Now we're about to go through a divorce and she wants to take my name off the birth certificate. I know that since my name is listed as her father, that is illegal as an adoption paper. I have, parent, I have parental rights to the child and I am intending to fight. For six years I was her father. I was at her birth. I cut the cord. When I get my son, which is mine, I get my daughter too. I have been separated for over a year and a half, and now I live with a girl I met six months ago. My girlfriend is unsure of this situation, and I can't blame her. She thinks I'm fighting a battle I can't win, and I'm wondering if she's right. Can I win this? Looks like karma hit my ex. Update. Saturday night, I received an angry text from my ex saying that she hopes I'm effing happy that I won. Oh, wow. So you won. I know I shouldn't have engaged in the conversation, but I was asking what her problem was. She answered with a, she answered with a response that made no sense and then proceeded to tell me to go ahead and gloat. Gloat times 10 because something happened to her. Then she proceeded to accuse me of being in on it. I was asking what I'm supposedly in on. Instead of a direct answer, she went off on me about how all men are pigs and can't be trusted. From then, I gathered two things. One, she's drunk off her butt. Again. Or two, the a-hole she left me for cheated on her.
I didn't say anything. When she's like that, any response is a fight, and I choose not to get into it. I just read the text messages and thought that she got exactly what was coming to her. She left me for my friend, who was married and had cheated on his wife three times with her being number three. And when I brought this up as she was leaving me, she told me, I know what I'm getting into. I guess she thought she was the end all to his wayward ways. When she ran out of insults to fling at me, she shifted her attack to my girlfriend, telling me she's ugly. And I could have had any girl, but I chose someone ugly to replace her with. My girlfriend is stunning both inside and out. My ex is also extremely jealous of my new girlfriend, and I've mentioned an older post. My ex had my ex had taken to stalking my girlfriend and trying to change her appearance to look like her. Wow. The attack continued with my ex telling me that I don't love my new girlfriend and it and it's impossible for me to fall in love with the first woman I effed after losing her. My ex and I had been apart a year when I met my now girlfriend. I took some time for me to feel comfortable trusting someone again. And that trust was earned and not given easily. He then followed up by claiming that I only love her because I lost my apartment and I'm kissing my girlfriend's butt for a place to live. And she is interestingly, and she so interestingly put it, it's only love when you're homeless. I had my own apartment across the street from my ex-wife because she decided to stay in the complex to flaunt the fact that she left me for my friend in my face every waking minute. When my lease was up, I decided to move in with my girlfriend and relocate my job there. I know she was trying to provoke a fight. I just wasn't giving it to her. When I thought my ex's attacks couldn't get any more stupid and childish, she proceeded to tell me that she's sorry she wasn't enough for me. I wanted so badly to call her at that moment and scream it was me that wasn't good enough for her. She left me, or did she effing forget? She left me, or did she effing forget which of us walked out the door and which, is, and which of us walked out the door replacing the other with someone else? She left me for a married guy that had cheated repeatedly on his wife. Real effing winner there. She then went on the attack on my girlfriend again, saying that we both know that she, my ex, was who I wanted to be with, that my girlfriend couldn't compete or hold a candle to her. At that moment, I had enough and was asking her to contact me when she's better and sober and turn my phone off. Hours later, when my girlfriend came home, she was asking me what was wrong. I warned her that she was going to get mad, and I handed, my, and I handed her my phone and told her to read it for herself. She read it and just laughed her butt off and handed me back my phone and said, Looks like he cheated. <laughs> I said it seemed that way and proceeded to try to reassure her, thinking the ugly comments might make her question me. They didn't even phase her. She told me that my ex's narcissistic ways really come out full-blown when she's drunk, and bet that my ex was upset that she couldn't come to me for a revenge F to get back at him. Yep. See, your girl knows. Your girl knows how women are. That's exactly what she was trying to do. I have yet to hear anything else from my ex. My guess isn't my guess is as usual the next day she looked back at those texts and saw what she did and she feels stupid. I'm also betting she's back with him because she can't stand to be alone. Wow, yes, your girlfriend was right. Your girlfriend knows how women are. She was just she wanted to use you. She couldn't use you. She knew she couldn't use you. She would have loved to come back and smash you and then go right back to her to her boyfriend, new boyfriend. It's a it's a whole little I got my lick back situation. It's stupid. It's it's stupid. And she would have used you for it. And I'm glad you weren't available. And even if you were single, I would hope you still wouldn't have been available. But I'm telling you, man, block her. She's done. Forget her. You don't need any contact with her. She's nothing but trouble. She's nothing but trouble. Look, man, I'm glad you're happy. I'm glad you're in a better situation. And I love to see people get hit with karma. She definitely got hit with karma. You expect I'm going to leave you for a guy who's who has a wife. Oh, he's going to leave his wife for me. 
just they just destroy great things. You know, they can have a perfect situation. And the fact that, dude, you were raising a child that wasn't yours and it was your supposedly best friend. <sighs> this is why, man, just people in general, I promise, man, just it's hard to trust anybody. This guy smiling in your face every day, all the time. Brother, probably calling you brother. This is my brother, my bro. Got your wife pregnant. He probably knew. They both knew and never told you a single thing. Man. You know how many men in the world are raising people, raising kids that aren't theirs? Aren't even theirs. And how many of those people will never, ever find out? There's there's marriages that go on for a long time or they'll get a divorce and this guy's stuck paying child support and the kid's not even his. And he'll never know. The fact that they can get away with stuff like that is it just blows my mind. How is there not mandatory DNA testing? It doesn't even make any sense. Well, you signed a birth certificate. That's all that matters. And I completely get the whole. You raise a child six, seven years old. That's your child. I do. I completely get that. But I think to be safe in the beginning, the man needs to know. Let me make sure that if, if this is my child. There needs to be mandatory DNA tests. You know, it should it should just be a situation like, yeah, it's a given. We give DNA tests just to make sure. But you can like sign off if you don't want to do it. If the, if the husband's saying like, no, I don't need no DNA test. I mean, he's crazy if he does that. Have that option, I guess, for the people who are like that. But um, it's crazy how they can just get away with this, guys. It, it's sickening. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.